I've made a couple of videos specifically on Alan Dershowitz, and he's one of those, oh, I hate to use one of these tripe tropes, but, or tropes rather, but it, it bears repeating in this instance. He's one of those guys on the left that I can actually respect and like, okay? I know, I know, I know, I know. Normally you hear that from a lot less intellectual people that are out there, but hey man, I gotta use, sometimes the metaphor fits, you understand? Now, is... This is just simply an attention grab for him defending Mike Lindell. Well, he also kind of has an entire back catalog of sticking up for the rights of like avowed anti-Semites. Okay, being a part of the dream team, the legal dream team for OJ Simpson, who again, I got to go through all of the evidence on that one, but I don't think necessarily the juice ended up doing that, but it is always funny to just mock him for doing it. But anyways, he's a pretty principled man. He's there for the rights of free speech, freedom of association. Now, his takes when it comes to the jab are maybe a little bit biased, considering the fact he's an elderly gentleman, but I appreciate him when it comes to having principled takes regarding the First Amendment. It's a lot more forgiving than the other one that a lot of fucking conservatives or whatever people on the right, uh, right-leaning people like to say, well, if even Bill Maher can come forward and say that the left is silly, then that means that they've gone far too far. I still remember the days when Trump was in office and Bill Maher had his fucking seal machines out there for his real-time show and he'd say, all right, people, listen, we need to, we need to tank the economy, okay, listen, really, folks, we should do that. That because Trump's really bad and now he just uh, unpromptedly because I also see a lot of people out there right now just saying oh man look at oh Bill Maher's really going through a red pill moment right now get fucked especially when he has stupid takes like this crime in cities is bad but not that out of the ordinary yeah mm, <laughs> I don't get that and democracy hanging by a thread is much worse yeah okay my okay during the overtime se er, segment of Friday's edition of Real Time, host Bill Maher said that while it's wrong uh, that you can walk away or walk into a Walgreens and shoplift, okay, people, uh, that's not that out of the ordinary, and it's eminently fixable, and it probably will be. Oh, by who? By who? Okay, because every time that you take a look around at the different Democrats are in these positions to actually enact the changes or just simply enforce the laws that are already on the books, what are they doing? Nope, we'll just go ahead and uh, make more crimes not subject to cash bail. Oh, we'll just go ahead and prosecute uh, fewer actual, actual crimes because, uh, let's be honest, uh, buildings burning down, that's not as bad as something else, so therefore, eh, we shouldn't really waste our time prosecuting any of that stuff. Just take a look at what's happened in Portland over the past couple of years for proof of concept of that one. So I guess that's where he's coming from on this one. Real liberal point of view here, and it's nowhere near the same as democracy hanging by a thread because a lot of people are under the impression that if Oh, they don't get the most amount of votes, it doesn't matter. Author Vivek, I don't fucking need to know how to pronounce that last name, uh, said that he doesn't think Democrats would have attacked the Capitol like on January 6th. Brother, brother, how many fucking times have federal buildings, state buildings, places of law been overrun by leftists? Let's just go through a couple of the popular examples. Abortion, when that was just overturned, okay, at least at the federal level, when Roe v. Wade, or at least the leaked opinion was there. Uh, Wa or Wisconsin State House. Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings. Oh yeah, those were overrun as well. And then in 2016, there were a few state houses that were also taken over as well specifically during the certification process of that 2016 election. Really funny you'd mention that. No, but uh, leftists would never do that. No, no, they're not the ones that are prone to violence. Unfucking believable But I've got to tell you uh, that we also have a legitimized crime in different sense over the last two years in this country. And at the end of the day, oh... I hate that fucking terminology uh, when we're talking about legitimize, uh, legitimization and victimhood legitimization. Well, at the end of the day, God, this guy's a real, he's an author. Oh, he's an author. Oh, okay, cool. So at the end of the day, the end of the day is the end of the day. No, no, no. I think a lot of the crime that we're seeing in these cities and across the country is because the de uh, democratic legitimization of breaking laws of a different kind. Now that's the threat. Oh, to democracy's point. Uh, Mark had in to say, again, it's a false equivalency. Uh, now, listen to me with my big brain. Now, um, it's 
Is it wrong uh, that you can walk into a Walgreens and shoplift? Of course it is. But they aren't really stealing anything important. Just, you know, the bread and butter products that like to keep those places open, okay? And that they had to pay in order to stock their shelves. But now, it's not like any of those businesses are closing or having to amend their opening hours. I don't really know about that. So yeah, there's there's an up-to-date interpretation of what Bill Maher's all about. He's all about chasing the fucking spotlight. He wants people to talk about what he's doing because, again, his show isn't really all that interesting besides the people that he brings on and then the dumb things that he says that just get clipped out by people who take the bait to the boomer nip. I'll be over here sticking to what Alan Dershowitz is all about because, again, I like principled dudes. Dershowitz said he's representing Mike Lind. Um, yes, uh, they took my... They, the FBI came and raided my car when I was getting a charboiled patty at the Hardee's drive through when I was in a nice, my home of Minnesota. Not too far from where I make my pillow with my patented fill and it's machine washable. But now I don't have to worry about spilling anything on one of my pillows because... I won't be going back to Hardee's anytime soon. They've had some actually funny tweets that are out there kind of mocking the entire situation because again, what the fuck did they do in that situation? Why is anybody caring about that? So again, hey man, some people will take offense to that. I couldn't find any of the ones that I was actually looking for. They had one that came right after he got snatched up. Something along the lines of, if you can prove you have a phone that wasn't taken by the FBI, you can come in and get a free small fry. It was, it was kind of funny as fuck. I appreciate that kind of stuff, and a lot of people were up in arms. Ugh, boycott Hardee's. It's like, just take a fucking joke, you trad cunt. Anyways, Lindell said last week, FBI agents approached him while he waited for food. Yeah, 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 we talked about that at all. And full length, sorry. Lindell is an election denier. <gasps> oh my god, he has questions that have never been fully answered. Whatever are we gonna do about that? Oh right, to have the FBI go after him. Uh, who att uh, yes, who attended a meeting at the White House in the waning days of the Donald Trump administration. Okay, cool. I'm sure a lot of people did. Okay. Uh, like Trump, the conspiracy theorist, he insisted the election had been stolen and brainstormed ways to keep Trump in power. How many of those were successful? Oh, I, Mr. President, I'm going to sell so many more PLOs and maybe that'll help you. Dershowitz, who joined Law and Crime's Sidebar podcast on Wednesday to discuss the case, uh, gave a written explanation in the Wall Street Journal. Again, is this the fucking plug segment for Dershowitz? Christ almighty. On Thursday, that's why he's representing Lindell. I disagree with my pillow founder uh, about a lot of things, including his belief that the 2020 election was stolen. Uh, the former Harvard law professor began, oh, he wouldn't be former if it wasn't for what's is happening on university campuses. But we'll get to that very shortly. I'm a liberal Democrat. Yeah, this, you're kind of getting pushed out of that club right now there, Dersh. He's a conservative Republican, yet I am enthusiastically representing him in a lawsuit against the Justice Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigations over a recent search and seizure of his telephone. You couldn't sound like an older man by calling his cell phone a telephone. Technically correct, but you're at least 20 years out of date with your verbiage. Dershowitz said it's important for everyone, including Democrats. Yeah, but they aren't going to hear this shit. They already think that you're just basically a fucking Nazi conspirator, which is just funny. Take a look at his last name. Including Democrats uh, to resist unconstitutional efforts by the Biden administration and supporters to abuse the law, particularly the criminal justice system, against our political opponents. Yeah, but this is just the manifestation. This is peak time for the culmination of everything that you've seen manifest speaking you do specifically dershowitz everything that you've seen manifest on university campuses right now and all of those people that came in seeking all of these uh, tert ancillary degrees okay i need to go in there and be a gender studies graduate okay i need to get a fine arts degree in something and then just go on and not do anything that's what everybody thought right oh yeah they just go to university and they would just they would study and then they'd think all of their crazy things and then they get into the real world and then they'd understand how things really work well guess what all of those people with those shitty ideas got their degrees and then realized that ooh, i can apply for jobs that have power uh and then i can play a whole bunch of victimhood cards because this was early back in the cut like this is mid 2000 shit when all this stuff really really started to kick off and all these people started to get institutional power there's not enough representation here oh my god uh, there's not enough racial diversity here oh my god you don't have any lgbt representation at your place please allow me to fill that out by becoming 
the human resources director. And why am I qualified for that position? Well, outside of that sec the sexist connotations of that term that you're using right there, I have a degree. I have a four-year degree. And that therefore qualifies me to this position. See, that's what happens. You set the qualifications necessary in order to apply for these high power jobs because again when it comes to diversity representation and the workplace okay those ideologues only care about the upper echelons okay the places that require people you know kind of climb the corporate ladder in order to get there no 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 we're just going to kick down the front door we are the educated class okay we have all the correct opinions and we just want to get put up there at the top they're never talking about equality amongst you know, garbage men or construction workers oh excuse me project managers yes project managers managers on construction sites you know the broads that sit in the fucking or yeah you know, in the construction trailer oh yeah yeah plenty of diversity and representation you see out there but the guys actually swinging the fucking hammers climbing the steel girders mm, yeah there's a distinct lack of titties well except for a couple of those fat bastards that are there running the equipment but outside of that not a lot of breaks to change your fucking pad i'm telling you but dershowitz knows this and dershowitz is talking about this okay I want to see his point of view on this, okay? Because again, I, I can see things from a certain perspective, seeing how it's permeating the rest of culture right now. But again, he was at one point Professor M. Terrace at Harvard, which is kind of funny now, okay? Harvard is sponsoring Brian Stelter to be there in their media department, and they kicked out Alan Dershowitz, one of the most accomplished lawyers of all fucking time, uh, because he has the wrong opinions on things. Oh, okay. Universities are propaganda mills. Uh, teach a new McCarthyism. Yes, no, exactly. He's, he's talking about... He's given a much more palatable term, or rather definition for wokeism. Ugh, I hate it. Former Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz became extremely unpopular with the progressive left when he joined former President Trump's defense team in 2020. Oh yeah, another reason why I like the guy. Okay, again, like he stated before, I'm a liberal Democrat. I gotta fucking press X to doubt on that one at this point. If you're defining what you used to stand for, okay, as opposed to what it means now, uh, those are two very different things, okay? But again, hey, that's his position. He wants to hold to it. But he still represented Donald Trump during his first impeachment proceedings and that's when he started to not get any more calls from any of the left left-leaning outlets cnn stopped ringing him up msnbc he used to be mainstays on all of these channels being their legal correspondent okay and fair enough he's very accomplished in those fields but then all of a sudden oh you you represented uh, donald trump that means that you're persona non grata hey but then at the same time you think that you know lawyers have to represent especially if they're going to be criminal lawyers in any form or fashion constitutional lawyers as well they're going to have to represent some reprehensible people so the guilt by association but that's ingrained in most of the people today when they're going through these university and dark indoctrination facilities okay it's the witch hunt for the 21st century if we're going to be completely honest Utterly unprincipled partisanship has taken over, Dershowitz says, which will have lasting detrimental effects on our nation. It's been happening for years at this point. I would argue all the way into the 90s, and now it's just now manifesting. I think uh, it'll probably get worse from here, but we're getting right close to the apex. I think this trend towards a new McCarthyism on the hard left is going to be enduring because it is being taught in universities today to our future leaders, Dershowitz said during an interview for Epoch Times American Thought Leaders. It will premiere as of September 27th, so from day of recording, a couple days from now. Uh, despite having been a highly influential law professor at Harvard University for 50 years, he never brought partisanship into his teachings, he said. Yeah, and also when it came to his representation. As you can see... Being one of the counsel for the impeachment of Donald Trump, somebody who he didn't vote for, somebody who he would never support in his policies, but he does when it comes to the ethics of the Constitution. Never once have I expressed a personal point of view in class. I taught the students how to think, not what to think. Oh man, that's what universities used to do. Now, well, you and I both know that's completely opposite now. And today, classrooms are propaganda mills, and students are future leaders. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a that's a sad fact about the world. In his new book, The Price of Principle, Dershowitz discussed what motivates him to follow the founding principles of the rule of law and due process instead of partisanship, despite the onslaught of accusation he receives. Yeah, his, his name was on the flight logs for Epstein. Oh my god. Okay, can you prove that? They're on there. Have you ever seen the client list of Epstein? N nobody has, so don't even need to finish that statement he has often represented people hated by the public including sex offender billionaire harvey weinstein i didn't actually know that 
ex-football player OJ Simpson because he believes fiercely in the rule of law. Yep, and that's why I appreciate him. Three principles Dershowitz adheres to uh, are freedom of expression and conscience, due process, fundamental fairness. Oof, that's, that's tough. I'd have to hear his definition on that one. And the adversary system of seeking justice and basic equality and meritocracy. Oh yeah, all of that shit is gone. And sorry, dude. Great principles, by the way. Fantastic principles. Again, with a little asterisk on how you would define fairness. And like he follows it up here. It's the essence of our system, and yet it's very unpopular. Yeah, yeah. And that's why this fucking world's in the fucking shape it's in. Dershowitz's strong adherence to these principles over politics often gets him criticism, and people tell him they don't like him. Oh, he's just an old man. Come on now. Uh, you were a wrong ever to respect me or like me. I was never on your side. I was on the side of due process and justice and civil liberties based. He noted that people of... Rel oh, religious affiliations are now the targets of the left and its abuse of the legal system. Ooh! Today, the victims of due process and civil liberties often are Republicans, conservatives, Christians, Jews, people who are not popular with the woke generation. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting. And I'm going to be talking about something else because now the left is going to be trying to take on Islam. Yeah, I don't really think that's going to end up working out for them. But also, the way that the woke left kind of tackles their own variation of the Jewish question. It's very interesting because there's a lot of Jews that support the woke left, but then they intermittently support Jews, but not Israel. And then sometimes Israel depends on who it's very strange. Again, that's just all intersectionality and how all that shit fucking breaks down. It's retarded. He doesn't personally like Trump and didn't vote for him, but I don't want to see the laws applied against Trump. Oh, I don't see the laws applied against Trump. That makes sense. However, many on the left are trying to get laws applied as they see fit to get Trump, Dershowitz said. Yes, very much so. Or very much so. But even though it's a pretty boomer take and it's mostly going to fall on deaf ears, because again, they've already just kind of ostracized Dershowitz from their side of the aisle. This is somebody who can eloquently put a point across, somebody who has a track record of standing up for the rule of law. But the way that the woke left defines... The foundations of law, eh, it's all racism, sexism, and it was all built on oppression or whatever other fucking dumb shit they want to lap on top of that. So he's fighting with principles that are good in practice but when you're fighting up against a group of people who fundamentally discount everything you're about and think that they can just magically hand wave it away and serve up a new way to run society that has failed multiple times over and have led to the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. You just got to disregard them and then just wonder how you can excise them from society in a peaceful way, of course. But anyways, with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.